everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to sync anything from your iPhone and your iPad so you basically get identical information on both. Now, the easiest way to do this, and the first way I'm gonna show you, is by correctly using iCloud because this will sync up 90% of things that you wanna sync up. And then I'll show you another method at the end that requires a different software on a computer, but it does make it easier for that 10% of people that are not getting quite enough with this first method. So where people get this wrong a lot is they actually use the different Apple ID on their phone and their iPad. So to check this, go to the settings on your phone first, the settings app here. Let me jump in there first and make sure you click on iCloud right here on top. Your name should be up here. If it says sign in, make sure you click that and sign into iCloud. And you need to make sure whatever email shows up here under your name is the same email you're using on the iCloud on the iPad. Okay, that's the very first thing. So make sure you look at whatever email this is. Then I'm gonna go to the settings app on the iPad. I'm gonna click my name on top here and I wanna make sure I'm using the same Apple ID. If I'm not, the rest is not going to work. It has to be the same Apple ID. Then I'm gonna go to my settings on my iPhone one more time. And on this same page, I'm gonna click on iCloud where it says iCloud, click on it. And this is everything that's getting back to iCloud and syncing with your iPad. So if things are not checked on here, they're not gonna sync between the two devices. So make sure everything that you see over here is on green if you want it on both of your devices and attached to iCloud here. Now, some of the apps are not gonna be compatible and they're not gonna show up on your iPad, so you'll have to download those again from the App Store on the iPad, but that's okay because then you could use the same user login there and get the same information. But make sure pretty much everything from messages to photos is all checked on over here. That's very, very important on this step. And on top here, if you want your photos to be the same on your iPhone and iPad, make sure you go to photos and make sure iCloud photos is turned on here. And you could choose optimize iPhone storage, make sure that's checked on and make sure shared albums is checked on as well if you want those on your iPad as well. Now, if you have individual photos that are not showing up on your iPad, you could always press this option right over here and that will let you use AirDrop. So if I select AirDrop, I could choose my iPad here and it will be sent wirelessly to my iPad. The only thing that you gotta make sure you have turned on for that to work is you have to make sure that Wi-Fi is turned on. And I usually even turn on Bluetooth in most cases, but in this case, it's just used the Wi-Fi to send it over to my iPad. This also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on as well. This is AirDrop, another additional thing to make sure different things that are on your iPhone are also showing up on your iPad, but iCloud Photos should take care of that step for you too. And if for some reason you're not getting exactly what you need out of what I just showed you, there is an app called Dr. Phone, but you do need a computer for this and you need to connect your iPhone and iPad one at a time. But basically what Dr. Phone does is it transfers, let me show you actually, I have it downloaded over here. What Dr. Phone does is it transfers anything from your phone to your Mac. So I have a phone plugged in right here. I have a physically plugged in. So that's what you have to do. You have to physically plug in a phone here to a computer. And then if you have Dr. Phone installed, it will appear like this. And you could transfer anything from that phone onto your computer. And what's nice about it is pretty much everything could be brought in and reviewed under these tabs. So your photos, your videos, your music, even your apps show up this way and you could select these and try to transfer them. I mean, some are not going to be compatible and some will require a paid upgrade, but this makes it really, really easy because of this visual interface here. Even live photos or hidden photos can be brought out from this page. So what you do then is you transfer everything to your Mac. That's the very first step using this computer. They do have a Windows version here as well. I'm just on a Mac here, so I'm showing you the Mac version, but you basically transfer everything there. Then I'm gonna unplug my iPhone and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my iPad instead because now things are on my Mac and I could bring them back here. I'm gonna trust this device and it's gonna connect my iPad now 
right, to my Mac or your PC in your case, and it's gonna transfer things into your Mac here, so everything is all centralized in your computer, or you could transfer everything from your Mac back to your iPad. So again, a lot of options available with this, and it makes it a lot easier because there's this visual layout. But the iCloud option, I think, is gonna work for most people, but I did wanna show you this because I know in some cases, you may wanna take advantage of this other option. I hope you found this quick video useful. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.